The next person that you're going to hear from is Dr. Regina Santella, and uh, Dr. Santella is a professor of environmental health sciences and the, the director of the NIHS Center for Environmental Health in Northern Manhattan. She's got extensive experience in the area of chemical carcinogens and molecular epidemiology. Um, but for us, uh, Dr. Santella, or Regina as we like to refer to her, has been a longtime partner in the struggle to make sure that environments, particularly in northern Manhattan, are healthy and that we are armed with good evidence to fight the fight to change policy uh, that marries our organizing to effective strategy campaigns. Dr. Santella. Thank you, Cecil. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this conference. The Columbia's NIEHS Center for Environmental Health in Northern Manhattan has worked for many, many years uh, with WEACT as our community partner. The center is funded by the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences to look at environmental causes of disease with the goal of disease prevention. Uh, the researchers in our center, about 30 some odd researchers, uh, do a myriad array of different types of research from cell culture studies, um, animal model studies, to population studies, including molecular epidemiology studies, where we're trying to understand the role of the environment and genetics uh, jointly in terms of disease causation. Uh, we work in several specific areas. Uh, a lot of the work at the center is related to respiratory diseases, uh, specifically asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, where we have basic studies and we also have population studies. And a lot of the asthma work has been done in northern Manhattan trying to look at environmental exposures in the home related to allergens and also environmental pollution related, related to truck, car, and so forth. We also have research related to environmental causes of cancer. And then also the, the final category of research is related to neurologic diseases. And what is the role of the environment in terms of neurologic uh, uh, neurodevelopment, so from early life factors, early life exposures into adult health? Uh, what is the role of environmental exposures in uh, brain development, in uh, neurologic diseases such as essential tremor, uh, ALS, uh, Parkinson's, and so forth. And so, the, as I said, the major goal is really to understand environmental causes, and then once we have more data, then we can look to diminish these exposures and hopefully improve the public health. My own research, as Cecil mentioned, is in environmental causes of cancer. Um, I don't know a whole lot about healthy homes, but I obviously have a home, and I would like it to be healthy, so I'm really looking forward to learning a lot more at this conference. I want to say thank you to both uh, Dean Watson, Executive Dean Watson, and uh, to Dr. Santella, our, uh, our co-conveners for today. Um, I'm really proud as a Deputy Director to stand here and acknowledge that WE ACT is not alone in sort of this fight for creating healthy homes. There are many community-based organizations all across the city that are uh, really fighting for quality housing and we really stand proudly with them as we add our voice to, um, bringing this issue of environment and environmental health inside the home to that struggle uh, today here at the New York City Healthy Home Summit. Um, I would like to now turn to one of my colleagues. I've had the distinct pleasure of working for the last almost two years now with Dr. Jalan White Newsom. Uh, Dr. White Newsom is WEAC's federal policy analyst and in that role she has really given us a presence in Washington DC particularly focusing on climate policy. She is a climate expert really with her research focusing on heat and its impact on the elderly and she has uh, more than anything in our work in the last couple of years really allowed us to focus on federal policy as it impacts the lives daily of folks in communities like Harlem and Washington Heights. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Dr. Jalan White Newsom to the stage, and she will set the stage today at our event for uh, the intersections between health and housing. So Dr. Santella will learn a little bit more immediately. First of all, thank you, Cecil, for that introduction, and it's just a privilege and honor to be here. I want to give a special thanks to our Environmental Health Director Oganaya, uh, who has been uh, doing a wonderful job along with the WEAC staff, interns to make this happen. And most of all, and most importantly, thanking you all for being here and braving the cold to, to come and learn about homes and health and the connection. Um, 
So I, I guess I want to start out with there is truly no place like home. You know, that's a familiar line that I'm sure most of you all have heard um, from the Wizard of Oz. And when I think about next week heading back home um, to my home in Michigan, for the Thanksgiving holiday, I think about good food, good family, good friends, and just hanging out in a place that's comfortable and safe and, and where I feel relaxed. And that's what home means to me, and I hope that's what home means to many of you. I was fortunate that the home I grew up in uh, was that type of place. Um, I didn't worry about my home making me sick, and my brother and I both had the propensity to develop asthma, um, but we didn't, and, and we were fortunate. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case for everyone. Uh, affordable, healthy housing is not something that uh, we all have the privilege to take advantage of, and it's something certainly that many residents of Harlem and places across this country uh, aren't afforded that opportunity or that human right is the way I like to think about it. So I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and my family and I owned many daycare centers across the city. We actually owned daycare centers in places where the bigger chains wouldn't go. And so the, the folks and the kids and the children that we received were coming from homes that were, in fact, unhealthy, uh, unsafe for many reasons. And particularly, I think about one little girl, little Jasmine. Um, that had been with us since she was one, and how she had moved from home to home to home uh, throughout her years of life, and just the fact that even now she's still dealing with uh, developmental and social delays. Uh, she's still trying to be potty trained, and part of that, what we've assessed, has been attributed to the fact that in the many homes that she's been in in her couple of years of life, uh, unfortunately had lead and many other environment exposures that weren't good. So this is a serious issue. I mean, and it's not just lead, it, it's some of those invisible threats like radon, carbon monoxide, some of the things that we can't see unfortunately can hurt us the worst. So those children's lives that have come through our centers and continue to come through our centers, again, are undoubtedly impacted by these exposures. And, you know, we need to change that because their, ch their lives are actually changed forever. And so I share my experiences from Detroit, but I know that WEAC's uh, Community Outreach Coordinator for our Healthy Homes Program, Anna, could probably share similar stories uh, from Harlem and many of the boroughs in this area. And so I know many of you can share those same stories just because of the work that you're engaged in. So while we have children and adults, you know, again, uh, living in plain and sometimes unsafe and healthy homes, a lot of energy and time in my world in D.C. is spent with daily dealing with those ambient air pollutants. So those things, those pollution sources that are controlled by the Clean Air Act that are outside that we can see, feel, hear, and smell. But I think most importantly, we can't forget, again, that the outside is important, again, because we have communities that are facing those multiple impacts, and it, it all adds together. Nothing's in a silo. But I think it's important that even the stuff from the outside we know can get into the inside. So I'm so glad that everyone is here to really focus on the inside, the home. So the EJ movement, again, has been working tirelessly, again, to, to fight those battles of ambient pollution. And, and why is this important? Well, I could rattle off a bunch of statistics that you all probably know, but just, again, I guess it's just crazy to me that asthma is impacting 20 million folks. There's 2 million emergency room visits related to asthma, 500,000 hospitalizations, and when we talk about our children, 14 million school days missed. I mean, this is, this is something that uh, is a little bit crazy and disturbing. And so I urge you today to start building up our inside game as well. Again, the outside is important, but we're here to focus on the inside today. It's really no longer acceptable, again, uh, for children to be exposed to lead in their homes, okay? It's, it's not acceptable that we allow cracks to stay open so pests and, and varmints and moisture can come in and cause things that we don't want our own children to deal with. It's no longer acceptable that apartments, homes, multifamily units, uh, again, are failing to meet just regular standards of safety. And it's time that we make sure in our changing climate that our homes are resilient to both the cold, the heat, and all the other stuff that, that's going to happen that we see occurring more frequently. So with that, uh, the question is, where do we go from here? And I was uh, enthused because the next session after this is talking about solutions. I mean, we all know the problems. We all know the issues. Um, we have the data and the stats to support it. But let's start talking about solutions. And so fortunately, Harlem is not like Capitol Hill, where, you know, because of elections that happened a couple weeks ago, we probably won't see any environmental stuff progressing or happening the way we'd like it to be. 
So I'm excited because you all have the passion, obviously, you have the power, and you have the propensity to make a difference right here starting in Harlem that can hopefully teach some lessons to our folks on Capitol Hill. So don't let this moment pass. Each of you in this room is an expert at something, whether it's urban planning, housing development, or just you know from your experience living in a home that's unhealthy. We are all here together today to take advantage of this opportunity to learn from each other and to, again, really push those solutions that can protect some of our most precious populations, our children, our elderly, and each one of you. So as a public health researcher, as an EJ advocate in DC, and most importantly, a mom of two little girls, a healthy home matters. And good policy, like the Asthma Free Housing Act of 2014 that I'm sure we're gonna be discussing today, it is something, it's a no-brainer. So let's go ahead and make it happen. Like Dorothy said in The Wizard of Oz, there is no place like home. So let's make sure that everyone here in Harlem and across this country can ultimately live in a safe, healthy home and enjoy the holidays and beyond. So thank you for your time. Um, we wanna thank all of our conveners sponsors and media sponsors uh, for the summit. Those are folks from the Columbia NIEHS Center for Environmental Health in Northern Manhattan, the Milano School of International Affairs, Man Management and Urban Policy. Our co-sponsors are the US EPA, Enterprise Community Partners, Tishman Environmental Design Center, LISC New York City, the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, the Manhattan Borough President's Office, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, the Columbia Center for Children's Environmental Health, and our media sponsors are Manhattan Neighborhood Network, Public Access Cable Television, and Mary Ann Liebert, uh, Inc., the publishers of the Journal of Environmental Justice. We act as an organization has a mission of building healthy communities. And we do that in eight key ways, but for today's, for today's purposes, one of the key ways that we do that is by really protecting uh, healthy indoor environments in low-income communities and communities of color. Um, we've been around for 26 years, and we believe in base building organizing to get those who are on the front lines and in impacted communities engaged in developing policies. That for us is our theory of change, and that is the way that we see building systemic change to further improve the lives, especially of low-income people and people of color in the communities, uh, not only in West Harlem, Central Harlem, and East Harlem and Barrio and Washington Heights, Inwood, where we organize, but all across New York City, all across New York State, and all across this country. Today, um, we're really excited to uh, bring forth some of our co-sponsors and conveners uh, to give a welcome to you. We are starting a few minutes behind, um, so I want people to come on in, and I'm gonna invite um, our uh, first panel of folks to offer their welcome to come on up. Um, and uh, Mary and Regina, would you all please come forward? I'd really uh, like to thank Mary Watson, who's the Dean of the New School for Public Engagement, Executive Dean, sorry, and uh, Dr. Regina Santella, the head of the NIEHS Center uh, for Environmental Health in Northern Manhattan. So without further remarks, I'd like to ask Mary Watson to come forward, please. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Cecil. So it's my distinct um, privilege and pleasure to welcome you here to this summit today. Um, I'm Mary Watson, Executive Dean of the New School for Public Engagement, and on behalf of President David Van Zandt and the New School as a whole, we are thrilled to host you here in our space um, today and tomorrow for this very important convening. Um, you may be aware that this space that you're sitting in now, um, now known as the um, auditorium at the Tishman Center, uh, the auditorium that used to be known as the uh, Tishman Center, um, has been named one of the 25 most influential rooms in universities in America. Um, many important events have happened here, including talks by Martin Luther King um, during the race crisis series and other luminaries. So you're in a very auspicious and important room uh, talking about a very auspicious and important event. Um, the New School has for more than 100 years been working on reimagining higher education, and I think the work you're talking about here reflects the kind of ethos and spirit that we have. 
Um, in particular, co-sponsor of this event is the Milano School for International Affairs, Management, and Urban Policy, which has been working on the issues um, of housing policy and affordable finance, especially how they connect to communities of color and low-income uh, neighborhoods and how in indoor environmental conditions are relevant in those spaces. Milano offers courses on housing policy and housing finance, and in partnering with the Parsons School of Design, Stevens Institute of Technology, and Habitat for Humanity, uh, created two homes for the Deanwood neighborhood in Washington, D.C. as part of the competition called the Solar Decathlon, uh, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy. The new school won first prize for affordability in that competition, but what more, what's more important is that those two homes, unlike others created for the competition, remain permanent homes for two low-income families in Deanwood, Washington, and influenced Habitat for Humanity's policies on how they look at affordable housing that's also sustainable. Um, we have many uh, folks uh, at the New School and at Milano who are connected to WE Act and the work that you're doing, but I want to call out two in particular. The first is Dennis Derrick, who is the um, founding board chair and long-term chair, although now currently on the board of WE Act. Dennis is a faculty member at Milano and has been um, building a lot of um, progress in his current project, Corbin Hill Farm. And I also want to call out Jennifer Terry, um, who's a Milano alum, who's program manager at Rebuilding Together NYC. Jen was just named staff member of the year across 166 affiliate organizations for the work that she's been doing, helping, pres helping preserve and create affordable and healthy housing uh, for New Yorkers. So without further ado, I want to turn the uh, event over to our next sponsor and welcome you all to this event. Thank you.